right, so you guys ready for the word? Yeah. Man, I got something for you today, all right? So in light of that, we've been in this series called Life. Everybody say life. Life, life, life. Last week, we told you about the idea that you get a choice. You can choose life or death. That's what you get to choose. You get to choose that. And we got that, excuse me, from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. And here's what it says, and I'm going to need your help here in a minute. It says, I call heaven and earth to witness today against you that I have set before you, come on, help me out, life and Life and death, all right? And look at the next part. Blessing and cursing. Y'all get that? Now, I love God because God gives the answer. He says, I'm gonna give you a quiz. And you get to choose. Oh yeah, pick this one. But anyway, you get to choose. I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Guess what he says? Choose life. Please choose life, choose life. For the love of me, see, God speaking. For the love of, please choose life. So here's the truth. We have a choice to make. Choice is one of the most powerful things we as humans get. We get the power to choose. Last week we talked about choose life over death. Choose that in the way you talk, choose that in all the manners of life. This week I wanna talk to you about choose, the next part of that is blessing over, over cursing. How many of you wanna sign up for a curse today? Anybody? Raise your, do not raise your hand. What is wrong with you? Peru, Westville, I hope nobody raised their hand. Listen, how many of you want to sign up for a blessing? Praise God. Come on now. Okay, about half of you. We're doing really good. All right, this message should really go a long way. So anyway, here's what the Bible says. What is God's will for your life? What is God's will for your life? Let's just get that out of the way real quick and fast. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then God Come on, say it. He blessed them. I want you to understand that this is chapter one, verse 26 and 27, I believe. It is saying right out of the gate that God's will for mankind as a whole was to bless them. I'm here to tell you, it is the will of God for you to be blessed. God wants you blessed. And I know I've heard it before. Well, Pastor Charlie, you're just one of them bless me preachers. Well, I'm not a curse me preacher. God wants you blessed. God wants you blessed. Now, let's get into defining what blessed is because I think that goes a long way. The word blessed, blessing, blessed appears over 400 times in your Bible. How many of you know if it appears once, it's important, but 400 times? Not only that, get this, it is the word Macarena. Every time you've done the Macarena, you've been blessed. <laughs> okay, maybe. That's the Greek word? No, and people were like, is that what it said? I don't know how you say that, but it looks like Macarena to me, praise God. All right, here's the truth. The word blessed means fully satisfied. Whenever we talk about blessed, we're talking about you being fully satisfied. Whenever God created Adam and Eve and set them in a garden, he blessed them. What does that mean? He made them fully satisfied. What else did it mean? He made them happy, blissful. Pastor Charlie, you're just always smiling. I know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Don't be mad. You can be blessed too. Happy, blissful, completely satisfied. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not striving for more. It doesn't mean I'm not believing God for more. It just simply means I'm satisfied. How about this? It means receiving God's favor regardless of circumstances. I thought that was an important one to list. I'm gonna be blessed regardless of my circumstances. It doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I choose, listen everybody, I choose blessing. I choose that. It doesn't matter. Listen, if you think you're only gonna be blessed whenever everything is great and easy and easy rolling, can I tell you, you'll never be blessed. You gotta be blessed even in the good times and the bad times, praise God. You have to recognize that the blessing of God doesn't pull back just because you're going through a tough time. The reality is Joseph was in a pit but the Bible says he was blessed. See, you can be in a bad place and still be blessed. Can I get a witness on that? Shouldn't negate the promise of God. Here it is, you ready? Being completely satisfied in every area of life. So what does that look like? And I just kind of wrote down a list of things or areas that you might want to be blessed in. And can I tell you, before I even go here, God wants you blessed in all these. He wants you blessed in all these. He wants you blessed satisfied. Are you satisfied in your spiritual life? 
Are you growing spiritually? Are you growing closer to God? Are you growing in the word? Are you growing? He wants you blessed in your thought life. I mean, do you feel like sometimes you should be on snapped? Are you what the Bible says, a well-balanced mind, stable? Do people look at you and go, "Uh uh-oh, come on, somebody. (laughs) A little too close to home. All right. Are you blessed in your social life? You're like, oh, Pastor Charlie, I got 1,400 friends on Facebook. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. If you've got two good friends, five, if you got more than 10, you got the wrong friends. All right? Are you blessed socially? How about this one? Are you blessed physically? Can you fall out of a tree and still feel strong and healthy? Praise God. Huh? You know, yeah, those of you that don't know why we're clapping, it's because last November I fell out of a tree, deer hunting. Deer, one. Charlie, zero. But don't worry. I'm going to get them back this year. We'll get them back, praise God. (laughs) Physical life. Are you physically strong? God wants you blessed physically. How about financial? Are you sitting there worried constantly about bills? Or are you to a place where, you know what, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God wants you blessed. God wants you blessed. How about your married life? You're married. How's your marriage? Do you feel blessed in your marriage? You feel like, hey, listen, everything is all right. Some of you are like, well, Pastor Charlie, I'm single. Well, you're blessed. (laughs) Ooh, what's he saying? (laughs) No, here's the truth. You ready? Whether you're single or whether you're married, God wants you blessed either way. He really does. Whether you're married to someone you've been married for years or whether you're not married at all, God wants you blessed. He wants you to be married, married and blessed or single and blessed. How about this, your parental life? How are you and your kids? your grandkids? Do you have a relationship with them? Do you love them? Do they love you? Do you have a relationship? Do you call them and they call you? Is it, is it good or is it bad troubled waters all the time? Can I tell you living in a home where you can't even talk to your kids or any of that, that's not blessed. That's cursed. God wants you blessed. God wants you blessed. It is the will of God for you to be blessed. God wants you blessed. Now here's the truth. You ready? You've got to choose blessing though. You gotta choose, it doesn't happen by accident. You have to choose the blessing of God. So now, let me get it to you this way. Why are you blessed? Why are you blessed? You know, there's a lot of reasons people say, well, I'm blessed, Pastor Charlie, okay, you're blessed. Why are you blessed? Why are you blessed? What does that look like in your world? Are you blessed because I love Jesus, that's why I'm blessed? Well, a lot of people love Jesus, that don't mean you're blessed. Well, I go to church. Okay, you go to church. I keep all the rules. You do? Don't hang around with me. Because I do speed. And I pass, people. I keep all the rules. Really? Uh, How about this? I keep all the commandments. You do? Liar. But you do? Really? You keep all the rules and that's why you're blessed? Watch this. Well, I, I, I tithe. Now, it's a good thing to tithe. The Bible says we should give God our first and our best. Can I get a witness on that? We honor God by giving our first and our best, and we see time and harvest. We understand that. But here's the reality. You ready? You're blessed because you tithe. That's why you're blessed. How about this one? I'm blessed because I pray. You're you're blessed because you pray? Can I tell you the problem? You may look at all these, and these are all good. Please don't misunderstand. I believe we should strive for these things. There's nothing wrong with these. Here's what I do want to say, though. If you think that this is why you're blessed, you got the wrong emphasis because look at the beginning of every one of these statements. They begin with an I. I do this, and I do that, and I do this, I do that. If that was the case, you could earn the blessing of God on your life. And I'm here to tell you, you can't earn what I'm, what I'm telling you right now. You can't earn this stuff. You only get it by recognizing what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago. See, I'm not blessed because I love Jesus, although I do. I'm not blessed because I go to church, although... <laughs> I do. I'm not blessed because I keep all the rules. Although I try, I'm not blessed because I keep the commandments. I do my best. I don't, I'm not blessed because I tithe and I do that. And I'm not blessed because I pray. I'm blessed because there was a man 2,000 years ago who was God in the flesh who came to this earth. He died on a cross 2,000 years ago. And I put my faith in him. And because I do, he blesses my life. That is the focus. The focus is not me, the focus is Christ. 
Listen to what Galatians says. This is what the Bible says, very, very clear. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Stop right there. I grew up in a church world where I thought that God was like the boogeyman, right? I would use the term here, but you guys don't know who I'm talking about, the boogie tie ties. Some of you are like the boogie tie ties. Okay, so in Southern Louisiana, the boogeyman got ate by the boogie tie ties. The boogie tie ties are way worse than the boogeyman. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> How many of you know I had a troubled childhood? <laughs> All right, just leave it there, all right? But here, here's the truth. Here's what I want you to hear. Here's what I want you to hear. That Christ redeemed us from the curse, but I grew up in a church world where I thought that God was looking to curse me. Matter of fact, I don't ever remember being taught that God wanted me blessed. I don't ever remember that. But I remember hearing a whole lot about how God was mad and angry and upset at me. Amen. And maybe... You, maybe those in Westfield, maybe those in Peru, maybe, maybe that's the only church experience you've ever had is hearing how God is, is angry at you. I'm here to tell you, you need to drop that old stuff. You say, why? Because here's the deal. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having been made a curse for us, Jesus died for the very curse that we're talking about. Jesus died for it. Having become the curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone who hangs on the, on the tree. Listen to this part. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, praise God. That the blessing might come upon, we didn't choose it. It's not my own self-effort. It's what God chose to put on us. God has blessed us. See, let me, let me explain it this way. In the beginning, God blessed mankind. We know that from Genesis 1, right? God blessed them, said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. God blessed them. Now watch this. But then man chose to eat from the knowledge of good and evil, that tree that they were supposed to stay away from. Everybody with me? They ate of that tree. It's called the fall of man. And when they ate of that tree, they brought a curse on the entire earth. It was something, they unleashed something that they had no ability to control. None, zero. And by therefore, all of us fell underneath that curse. Then Jesus comes 4,000 years later. He dies on a cross. We know the story of the gospel. He dies on the cross and he became a curse for us. So now when we put our faith and trust in Christ, watch this. He became a curse so that now the blessing of Abraham and the blessing of God might fall onto our lives, praise God. It's not our own self-effort and it's not what we do. I'm blessed not because of what I do. I'm blessed because of who I believe in, praise God. That's good news for you. That means you don't have to earn it. That means you don't have to measure up. That means even when you don't feel like you're good, God still blesses you. See, check this out. He died for you and he paid for your curse. He satisfied God, God's wrath. He did it for you. See, get this. I am blessed not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus did for me. Can I get a witness on that in Jesus' name? Absolutely. You say, well, Pastor Charlie, that's all well and good, but, but what does that mean? Here's what it means. And if you belong to Christ, how many of you belong to Christ, okay, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. You are the descendants of Abraham. You are the descendants. Now, let's look, if you are the descendants of Abraham, let's look at how God blessed Abraham. Let's look at it. One verse, very, very simple. Now, Abraham was old, Genesis 24, 1, well advanced in age, and the Lord blessed Abraham in some things, in a few things. So what it says? It says, in all things. Are you the descendants of Abraham? Yeah. Guess what God wants to do? It is the will of God for you to be blessed in, in all things. God wants you to be blessed in all things, but here's the kicker to it. God can want something for your life and you not participate. The Bible's very clear in Timothy, God is not willing that any should perish, but all would come to everlasting life. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell and separate themselves from God for eternity, but they have to choose God. Can I tell you the same principle here? God wants you all to be blessed, but you gotta choose the blessing and not the curse. 
You gotta choose the blessing. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. God wants you to choose the blessing. Now, you begin to think about this and you have to realize how powerful the blessing of God is on your life. I'm here to tell you, it's one of the most powerful things. You've gotta not agree with the curse and you've got to agree with the blessing of God on your life. And when you recognize that how powerful the blessing of God is on your life, no one can talk you out of it. And no one can steal it from you. It's actually one of the most awesome things that you can ever find in the Bible. Matter of fact, there's a story in the Bible, Old Testament, Numbers chapter 22 and chapters 23. It's about a, a guy named Balak. Balak was the king of the Moabites, all right? Balak was a king. He was a politician, all right? And then he wanted a guy named Balaam. Balaam was a prophet of God, and he wanted Balaam to curse the people of Israel. He wanted to curse them, curse them. Matter of fact, you'll find it. I'm not going to read all this for you, but I'll just give you a couple verses of it as, as I begin to break it down. But here's, here's what you find in Numbers 22. It says, and then he sent a messenger to Balaam, son of Beor, however you want to say it, uh, which is near the river in the land of the sons of the people and call him saying, look, the people have come up out of Egypt. See that they cover the whole face of the earth and are settling next to me. And so the next verse is, he says, I want you to curse them. He says, therefore, please come up at once and curse this people for me for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land for I know, watch this, whom you bless is blessed. And I know whom you cursed is cursed. So he gets him together and, and Balak says, okay, Balaam, I want you to spend a little bit of time with the Lord and I want you to come out here now. I want you to curse him. So I'm going to tell you the story rather than reading it. And then I'll read the last part of it. All right. So then he gets this. This is so funny to me. He comes out there. He, he had been with the Lord and Balaam tells Balak, I got a word from the Lord. And he comes out there and he, he goes this, he speaks over the children of Israel. He goes, I bless you. And he blessed them. And, he, and Balak looks at him and he goes, what are you doing, you praise God person? Why are you doing this? You, I told you to curse them so we could wipe them out. You come out here and you bless them. And the way he blessed them is he said, what God has blessed is blessed and what God has cursed, God has cursed. I can't curse them, they're blessed, sorry. <laughs> All right, and Balak, he doesn't say this, but I can just see it going, what happened to that $50 I gave you? I paid you, I gave you grease money to curse them. What's wrong with you, man? Come on, he's a politician. <laughs> Thinks you can pay everything off. Anyway, so, some of you will get that later. But anyway, so, so, so he, goes, he goes, okay, hold up. Balak says this, hold up, time out. Wait a minute, let me put some boom in it. All right, but anyway, he goes on. He goes, let's change locations. So the Bible says they physically change locations. They build seven altars. They sacrifice some more animals. And they go, okay, Balaam, wind up again. They give Balaam a second chance. Balaam walks out there and he goes, I got a word from the Lord. Matter of fact, let's just pick it up right there. Because to me, it's pretty funny how it all breaks down. You ready? Here's what he says. He says, uh, he says, so he came to him and there he was standing at the burnt offering and the princes of Moab were with him. Watch this. And Balak said to him, what is the Lord spoken? Oh, I can't wait. Curse the people of God. Curse them, curse them, curse them. Watch this. <laughs> and so he took up the oracle and he said, rise up, O Balak, and hear. Listen, to, uh, son of Zippor. Watch this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. <laughs> has he said it, will he not do? Or has he spoken it, will he not make it good? Are you kidding me, Balak? Balak had to lose his mind right there. He's like, what? I called you to curse him. You came out and blessed him. Then I gave you a second chance. And then you said, God is not repenting. God has blessed him and he can't curse him. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Watch this next part. Behold, I have received the command to bless. He has blessed, I cannot reverse it. He who? God. God has blessed and he cannot reverse it. I don't care who anybody is. They cannot reverse the blessing of God on your life. If God said you're blessed, you're blessed. It doesn't matter what the devil said. Doesn't matter what your neighbors say. Doesn't matter what who says. All that matters is if God says you're blessed, then guess what? You're blessed, praise God. You're blessed. 
You can't reverse it. You cannot, you cannot curse what God has blessed. You cannot. How about this? And you cannot bless what God has cursed. You cannot do it. But here's the truth. Unless you choose to be cursed, unless you choose, unless you line your life up with the curse, you can't be cursed. It's by choice that people are cursed now. It's not by the law. No longer is it that way. Jesus came and died for you. He died for you to move you from the curse to the blessing, praise God. Now you have to line your life up, line your heart up, line your world up with the blessing because you can be blessed. It's a choice that you make, not God. Preach on, Pastor Charlie. I will praise God. See, here's the truth. For me, I refuse to choose a curse. I refuse. Matter of fact, I choose to walk in blessing. I choose it. I have the choice, and if you give me a choice between life and death, hello. You give me a choice between blessing and cursing, hello. If you want to choose a curse and you want to choose death, please walk up here so I can lay hands on you suddenly. What is wrong with you? Come on, that's a joke, y'all. Don't do that. Here's the reality. God wants you blessed. God wants you blessed. Everybody just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. So how do I begin to activate this thing in my life, this blessing in my life? Well, I wore you out with it last week, but I am gonna say it again. You got to speak the blessing. Just like you said last week, we said you got to speak life. Guess what you gotta speak? You gotta speak the blessing over your life. You gotta speak blessing. How many times do people speak death? How many times do speak, people speak curse over their life? They speak it. They speak it, well, I'm so sick, I'm so worn out, I'm so tired, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so broke, I'm so this, I'm so that. You're just speaking that death stuff out. You're just speaking that curse stuff out. You know what? And you're choosing. By your vocal cords, you are choosing what manner of life you're gonna live. I refuse to, I'm not saying that. I refuse to say anything like that. Even when our kids were small, when I got a revelation of this, I refused our kids would come up to us. Come on, anybody been to the store with kids? They come up to you and you're like, I'm not buying that. You know what most parents will tell their kids? We can't afford that. Come on. That was the way of, that was the loophole. The truth is you got more money in your bank account to be able to pay for that. The reality is you're not gonna buy it because it's a bad investment. So rather than saying, we don't have the money for that, why don't you just tell them the truth? Suck it up, we're not getting it. Okay, bad parenting. Don't listen to that. That was a joke. That was a joke. No, on a serious note, I, we would tell our kids, we wouldn't say, hey, we can't afford that we would, because I'm not speaking that curse over my life. We would tell our kids, you know what? Hey, listen, guys, we don't think we should buy that right now. We're not gonna buy that. You, you hear what I'm saying? I'm not speaking. I can't afford that because in the, in the truth of the matter is I'm blessed and I will and can. Come on, y'all getting what I'm saying? You gotta think that way. You gotta process information that way. I refuse to agree with the curse. Listen to this. Listen to what the Bible says about the words that you speak. We know Proverbs 18, I wore you out last week with it. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Listen to this though, Psalms 35. Let them shout for joy and be what? Glad. Well, Pastor Charlie, just one of them happy preachers. It's biblical. Let them shout for joy and be sad. That's not what it says. Let them shout for joy and be what? Glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say, sometimes. Is that what it says? Let them say what? Continually. How often is continually? Oh, all the time. What should we be saying? Here's what we should be saying. Let the Lord be magnified. Who delights, takes pleasure in the prosperity, the blessing of his people. Now think about it. Think about how crazy it is that I have to convince people that God wants them blessed. Think about this. How many of you got kids? How many of you like your kids? Hands went down. Sorry about that. No, for real. How many of you like your kids? Westfield, Kokomo, Peru. How many of you love your kids? All right. By show of hands, how many of you want your kids blessed? Raise your hands. Everybody in here. All right. Lower your hands. Check it out. If you tell me you want your kids blessed, and the Father in heaven loves you more than you love your kids, do you not think he wants to bless you? You say, no, I don't believe that. Okay, then your, mirror, then your moral makeup is better than God's. 
That's what that means. That means you have a better standard or moral makeup than God. And can I assure you of this? You don't. You don't. God has a better moral character than you. God loves your family and your kids more than you do. God wants to bless your life and your family more than you could ever imagine he wants to. He wants to bless your family. He wants to. He takes delight in, in pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He, 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 he rejoices in your blessing. Just like whenever your kids get blessed, you rejoice, he rejoices over you when you're blessed. Preach it. I will. Thank you. Amen? Amen. Man, that's the truth. You ready? Listen to this. We're going to read Deuteronomy 28, just a portion of it. The reason I want to read it is it talks about what blessed looks like. Okay? So even if you, you don't see it as tangible, this is what blessed looks like. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I get so excited reading this, I about pop. All right, I about pop because I just get so pumped. Now, if you want to know what curse looks like, go to Deuteronomy 28. It will tell you what curse looks like too. But we're going to read the blessing because this is what the Bible says God has promised you. And remember, Jesus fulfilled the law. So I'm going to read it as if Jesus did fulfill the law because he did. All right? So here we go. All of these blessings shall come upon you and what? Overtake you. Did you all get that? Overtake you. In other words, this is made up story. I was running down the road yesterday and I was running from the blessing of God and it honed in on me like a honing beacon and it jumped on my back and it beat me down to the ground. I finally shook it off a little bit and started taking off running again and it beat me down again. That did not happen. I'm just saying that's the visual that I see with that scripture. You say, I don't see that. I'm blessed. Here's what it says. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. <laughs> I'm waiting for the blessings to overtake my life every day. Hello? I'm waiting. It's happening some days. Every day. Overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Did Jesus obey the voice of the Lord your God? He obeyed. He fulfilled the law. I get the blessing of the law because he died for me. All right? Look at this. It goes on to say, blessed shall you be in the, and blessed shall you be in the, Blessed everywhere I go. When the church was downtown, just Kokomo, when church was downtown, people were like, well, you're gonna move out to 550 North in Howard County? You're gonna move out there? You, you know, what, we, it, it might fall, it might crumble. Well, no, 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 you don't understand. It doesn't matter where I go. I'm the Chick-fil-A of church, baby. <laughs> All right, it doesn't matter where I go. All right? I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. If I go out there 20 miles, it doesn't matter because I'm blessed everywhere I go. The blessing of God is gonna hunt me down. People will come. Why? They gonna find it, praise God. They gonna hunt it down, praise God. Amen? I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in Westfield. I'm blessed in Peru. I'm blessed in Fort Wayne. I'm blessed in Frankfurt. I'm blessed in Muncie. I'm, ble I'm blessed everywhere I go. Praise God. Can I get a witness on that? That's what the Bible promises. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. And I like the latter better. But anyway, blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds and increase of your cattle and your offspring and your flocks. Watch this. Blessed shall you be the basket of your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. <laughs> and blessed shall you be when you go out. I'm blessed coming and going, baby. I can't even keep up with it. Everywhere I go, coming and going, I'm blessed. Come on, you are too, amen. You're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, you guys are still saying it kind of sissy like, you know. Come on, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah, you got to claim it, man. Look at this. He goes on. For the Lord will cause your enemies to... I like this one. I don't know why, and I don't think it's all godly. I don't think it's really pure in heart, but I really, really, really like this one. I really do. And again, I don't think it's the most godly statement for Charlie, but I like this one. <laughs> for the Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before your face. <laughs> There's something in my flesh that gets excited about that. All right? It goes on. They shall come out against you one way, and then they fall apart and split in seven. I love it. I know it's flesh. 
I know it's not spiritual, but I like it. It's Bible. It's Bible. Here we go. Look at this next part. For the Lord will command, listen to that. The Lord will command his blessing. The same God that slung the stars into existence. The same God that said, let there be light. And the darkness had to bow. Commands the blessing on me. Commands it. Commands it. He commands the blessing on you in your storehouse and in all of which you set your hand to. That's right, baby. And he will bless you in the land for which the Lord God is giving you. Yes, he will. And the Lord will establish you as a holy people unto himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep his commandments for the Lord your God will walk in his ways. How many of you know Jesus fulfilled that? I'm in Christ. Jesus fulfilled that. Here we go. Look at this next part. For then all peoples of the earth shall be called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be, I look it, I like this one, and I know it's flesh, they'll be afraid of you, <laughs> I like it, 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 look at this next one, and the Lord will grant to you plenty of goods, so you lack nothing, plenty of goods, and the fruit of your body, even if you fall out of a tree, <laughs> in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground and in the land for which the Lord God swore to your fathers to give you, watch this, for the Lord will open up to you his good treasure. Man, I love it. Forget Goldman Sachs. I got Goldman Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. He will open up the good treasure. Man, that's good. The heaven will give to you rain in the land in your season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and but not borrow, praise God. That's why Westfield, Peru, 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 $1.5 million. We didn't borrow a dime. It's paid for cash, baby. Paid for cash. Paid for cash. Come on, Peru. Paid for cash, baby. Yeah, we're going to lend and not borrow. We're going to believe God. Our God shall supply our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. That's what the Bible says. It goes on. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. See, you've been cussed at before. You tell him, uh-uh, Deuteronomy says. <laughs> Some of you will get that later. Okay, what was he exactly saying? <laughs> You are the head, not the tail. You're above only, not belief. Watch this. You shall be above only and not beneath. And if, you're, and if you heed the commandment for the Lord your God, which I commend you to this day to be carefully observed them, you will get all those blessings. How many of you want those blessings? Then you got to choose it with what you say. You got to speak it. I'm blessed, not cursed. I'm favored. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above only, not beneath. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Everything I put my hands to prospers. The Father delights in my blessing. The Father delights in my prosperity. My Father wants to see me succeed, praise God. Amen? He wants me to. And guess what? He wants you to. He wants you to be blessed. No doubt about it. So I've got to speak it. Next thing I got to do is I got to think blessing. I got to think that way. Listen to this. The Bible says this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever, is it true that God wants you blessed? Amen. Think about it. Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, is it just for your heavenly father to crucify his son? Take the curse from you. He took it for you. And then you not claim the blessing that he rightly earned. Is that just? That's not just. What is just is that Jesus died 2,000 years ago for my curse. And it is just for me to claim his blessing over my life. He died not in vain over my life. He died for a cause. And I'm going to live up to that cause. And I'm going to receive the blessing of God on my life. Praise God. Say, Pastor John, I don't know about it. Well, if you don't want yours, let me know. I'll take yours too, praise God. Because I'm into it. I'm really into it. It goes, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, whatever things are virtuous, then these things are, that are praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things. Think not on, I'm going to get cursed by God. Think, I'm going to get blessed by God. 
Think God's not after me. No, not God's for me. Think my God is on my side, not against me. Wow, I just can't believe that. Well, go ahead with your religious self. Let Jesus die in vain. Let it all be a mockery. Not Charlie. Charlie believes what Jesus did. Charlie believes that he died for a curse. Jesus did it all so I could receive all the blessings of God on my life. And I'm going to believe for him. Amen? Amen. That's me. That's me. Here's the next one. You ready? You got to expect the blessing. You got to expect. You got to walk around with the heart of expectancy. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Anyone who comes to God must believe he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You got to walk around expecting. The first miracle in the book of Acts is the guy looked to Peter expecting to receive something. You got to walk around with a heart of expectancy. You really do. I was thinking about it like this. This is a simple, simple illustration, but I'll give it to you. Um, about 10 months ago, six, six to 10 months ago, I inherited an air compressor from my father. Five horse, 20 gallon air compressor. This seems simple, but I'm gonna show you this. Simple. It took a nosedive, doesn't work anymore, and it, it meant something to me because it was my dad's, okay? And again, not that big a deal. Michelle said, do you wanna go buy another one? I said, nope, I'm gonna believe God for one. I'm gonna believe God for one. And I really was specific, not with Michelle because she could care less about air compressors, all right? But I, but I was like, I want an old, I want, a, I want an 80 gallon air compressor, and what I want is an 80 gallon, I really want a single thumper, single piston air compressor, and I want an old one because they last forever. How many of you know new stuff falls apart quick? Old stuff lasts for a long time. Anyway, nevertheless, I said, I'm gonna believe God for one. So months go by, nothing happens. Michelle's like, and, and I was telling her, man, I really miss my air compressor. Well, let's go. No, I'm not gonna buy one. I want an 80 gallon. I want a single thumper. I want an old one. That's what I want. And I'm checking on my Facebook, you know, and I'm, I'm doing my part. Someone calls me about two weeks ago. Someone in the church said, Pastor Charlie, it's Bob Boyd. Hey, Pastor Charlie, hey, uh, check this out. My dad, or my, uh, my mom, who, you know, mom and dad, they're selling their house. Dad's passed. Dad passed. You got mom living in the house. Mom's selling the house. We need to clean out the garage. You need to come over here. Because we got his, his dad was a body man. So we, we're going to, we want you to take his tools and, and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay. I go, okay, so when do you need it out by? He said, tonight. <laughs> okay. And he, got, and he goes, hey, also, there's an air compressor here if you want it. He goes, it's a big monster. <laughs> it's old. Really? I kid you not. I grabbed the church trailer. I drive over there. Toph, pastor Toph went with me, Westfield campus pastor. Went over there with me. We backed it up. We start loading up this thing. Here's this air compressor. It was like a touch by an angel moment. Whoa. <laughs> All right. And this air compressor, I kid you not, 80 gallon, single piston, air compressor right there. I loaded that baby up, I took it home, I wired it up. Dum, 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 dum. I got air in my garage again, praise God. Now, you say, oh, that is, no, that's the blessing of God. And I didn't have to go hunt it down. They even called me. Bob called me wanting to know if I wanted that thing. Now, you say, oh, you're, eh, God doesn't care about that stuff. Are you kidding me? My father cares about all my needs. Even my wants and desires he cares about. And I kid you not, I don't care what nobody says, that air compressor was sent to me by God himself. Yes, it was. Praise God. He cares. Now, I say all that to say, when my dad's air compressor went down, you know what I did? I stripped the hoses off of it. I took the cables out of it. I took everything off of it. And I cleaned the spot out because the new air compressor was gonna sit right there. I made a way for God to provide that and made it happen. How did I do it? Expecting a blessing. Let me give you one more and then I'm gonna shut up here in a couple hours. Here's another thing I do every year. I grew up in a, in a home where my father never bought me a birthday present. My dad went to prison when I was nine. Even after he came out of prison, never bought me a birthday present. That's just the way he was, that's the way he did it. When I got saved and born again and on fire for God, I felt like that was wrong. So I said, if my, my earthly father's not gonna buy me a birthday present every year, father, I'm expecting you to supply me a birthday present every year. 
And can I tell you, without fail, without fail, ever since I've been born again, every year I get a special birthday present from God. Every year. And you say, what, what kind of presents? Sometimes there are things people buy, sometimes they're not. 2015 was an awesome year, awesome year for my birthday. Say, what happened? Well, it was November 16th, my birthday's on the 17th. I happened to be in the woods with Pastor Toph and my son, and a big old buck stepped out. And you know what? You say, oh, anybody can shoot a deer the day before their birthday. Oh yeah? I missed him the first time. And if you don't know nothing about deer hunting, you usually don't get a second shot, praise God. And I did it with a bird gun. A bird gun. Why? Because Michael had my slug gun. I didn't even have the right gun, praise God, and got that deer. That's why I named him Deuce. Because it took two shots. But here's the reality. And, and I kid you not, I kid you not, your father cares about you, but you got to be expecting the blessing. You got to be expecting it. You got to live with an expectancy in your heart. God, I'm expecting for you to do something big. I'm expecting for Kokomo to do something big. I'm expecting for Westfield to do something. I'm expecting Peru to do something big. I'm expecting God to do something big and bless some people. Come on, amen. Here's the last one. You ready? The last part of this to me is really, really just as powerful as the rest. The reason you're blessed is to be a blessing. Don't think that the blessing is all about you. It's not meant to just serve you. It's meant to serve everyone around you. It really is. Listen, in uh, Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three, God says, come out, Abraham, come out. He says, I'm gonna bless you. And in the midst of that, he gives really four commands, and I'm gonna give them to you this way. He says, I will show you where you need to go. And then guess what? I will make you and make your name great. And then he ends it with this part, and you will be a blessing and you will be a blessing. You say, Pastor Charlie, why does God want me blessed? Don't think it's all about you. I mean, does God want you blessed? Yes, but the blessing doesn't just affect you. He wants your children to be blessed. He wants your grandchildren to be blessed. He wants all those who work for you to be blessed. He wants those who work around you to be blessed. He wants you to know that the blessing, although it's for you, it's not meant only for you. It's meant to rub off on everybody else and be a blessing to them too. Don't be so focused on you with the blessing. Recognize the blessing is for everybody else around you. See, I wanna be blessed so that I can be a blessing. And God wants you blessed so you can be a blessing. Come on, you believe that? Come on, everybody say, I am blessed to be a blessing. Come on, Kokomo Westfield, everybody say this. I am blessed to be a blessing. Here we go. Let me pray for you. You ready? Father, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. And I ask that you bless them, you touch them. Father, we recognize we are blessed to be a blessing. And Father, I pray that each and every person would recognize and realize at each of our campuses that they are blessed and that they have to agree with the blessing. And Father, you've blessed them. You've done your part, God. We have to claim our part. We tell the devil you got no power over our lives and you have no power to stop the blessing. And Father, we declare we are blessed. Now listen, those of you watching, those of you here, listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you'd like to accept him as your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer. Pray it with all of your heart and I will assure you with all my heart, you'll be on your way to heaven. Now, now maybe you've been to church before, but you never have given your heart to Christ. Maybe you've been to church and you don't know that you'd be on your way to heaven. Now is your opportunity. I want you to pray this prayer with all of your heart. And I want those who are saved and born again to pray it also. So everyone's praying. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. So therefore, I put my faith, I put my trust in him today, in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody says amen. Give the Lord a big, big clap, praise God. <laughs>